Hi everyone, my name is Maika Sanderson and I'm a program analyst at the Appalachian Regional Commission. And I'm super pumped to be bringing to you today another Power Virtual Workshop, this time on organizational structure. I'll be going through the material pretty quickly, so you'll want to make sure to review the slides after you watch this video. More importantly, make sure to read and review the RFP thoroughly. Let's get started. So what's organizational structure and why is it so important? Organizational structure is actually one of the criteria by which your power application will be evaluated. So you'll want to make sure that you are clearly demonstrating to reviewers that you have the organizational structure that's necessary in order to manage and administer a power project. Let's dive into what organizational structure really means. Organization by definition implies a structure and, an, and a structure establishes and arranges a clear way by which to achieve a singular goal. And with the power project, since you'll be working with multiple partners to execute on that scope of work, you want to make it really clear to reviewers that you have a definitive plan for how each one of your partners, as well as your organization, will be working together uh, to get the work done. Some key things to keep in mind as you're preparing your application in this particular section. You'll want to make sure that you are describing your organizational and administrative capacity to administer a power project, um, as well as describing the readiness um, and the timeline by which you will execute on the key activities for your project scope of work. We recommend that you have a work plan that is required, um, a work plan that clearly outlines all of the key activities, the responsible persons, and the time um, by which that particular activity will be completed. So let's break down structure a little bit more. Um, so structure actually has three key elements, governance, rules, and distribution of work. We'll talk a little bit about each of these. So when you're trying to describe your organizational structure, you're, go you're going to want to talk about governance. And so what does governance really mean? Governance essentially means who is the boss, who's making the decisions in the organization. And since you're putting together a power project, you'll probably have multiple stakeholders working in concert with one another to execute on the scope of work. Um, so you'll want to make sure that you're establishing formal roles and responsibilities for all levels of the organizational structure. So what does that kind of mean? Well, the lead organization can probably be expected to be the person where the buck stops. So they are kind of the head kahuna on the project scope of work because they're gonna really be held responsible by ARC um, to, to execute on that work. But they're not gonna be doing it alone. So it's gonna be really key and crucial to, to assign the roles and responsibilities for the various parts of the scope of work to your partners um, and make sure that you describe that organizational structure. So if organization A is going to be doing the outreach, you're gonna to wanna to really outline who are the key staff members at that organization that will be working um, to, to do those outreach activities. So another thing to keep in mind is that fiscal sponsorship is a viable option for a power project, which is a fantastic way for organizations that might have a lower capacity, perhaps less staff, um, less back end office structure, um, but do a lot of great work in the community um, to, to, to leverage. Essentially, they're able to work with another organization, perhaps a university or a larger nonprofit or other eligible entity who will kind of do all of those back end responsibilities, such as compliance reporting, um, collecting all of the financial record and tracking, making sure reimbursements are happening in a timely fashion, and that all project partners are executing on the work as they said they would and complying with federal regulations to do so. So you'll wanna make sure that in this section of your grant application, if you're using a fiscal sponsor, that you state who that fiscal sponsor is, provide some background information as to why they would be a good fit to be a fiscal sponsor and handle all of those various responsibilities. So the second element that we mentioned about structure are rules. Um, so 
We really want to make sure that you are demonstrating to reviewers that your organization has the capacity to follow all of the federal regulations um, outlined in 2 CFR 200 um, to administer and manage your power project. So 2 CFR 200, what's the CFR stand for? It's the Code of Federal Regulations. And as you can imagine, when large amounts of money are being given out, there are gonna be some strings attached. So 2 CFR 200 really outlines all of the federal regulations that an organization should be aware of if they are accepting um, power money or any federal grant money. So something to keep in mind is if you're awarded, among other requirements, your organization will be expected to develop policies and procedures um, for how things will happen during the course of the grant period, how the work will be done. And so your policies and procedures are going to cover things like management of people, hiring, firing, um, financial tracking, supplies and equipments, execution of activities and engaging with other organizations, whether to kind of contract out other work or et cetera. Some other key grant functions that you'll be expected to do as a power recipient would be compliance reporting, sub-award management. So if you're working with partners and giving them monies, making sure that they are complying with all of the rules for 2 CFR 200, uh, performance measurement, uh, you know, tracking of reimbursement, and of course, general record management. So in this section of your power project um, application, you'll wanna make sure that you're really outlining that you are aware of 2 CFR 200 and the regulations, and that you have the capacity to um, comply with all of the regulations that are outlined. You'll probably wanna share some of your federal grant management experience in the past. What are some other federal awards or large uh, foundation awards that you've received in the past and your ability to comply with grant management rules. Distribution of work. So you'll wanna be very clear about how the work is going to be distributed among yourself as well as the partners that you will be working with. So it is required that you develop a work plan. You'll want to make sure that your work plan outlines key activities, the responsible person or persons, and the organization for which they work um, that will be um, kind of tasked with completing that particular activity, as well as the timeline for, for executing on that particular task. When assigning responsibilities, you'll want to make sure that there is adequate staffing to complete the work. So when taking a look at the whole project scope, are there enough staff members or partners um, involved in the work to actually get everything done? In addition, you'll want to make sure that the staff that has been assigned to do particular parts of the scope of work, that they have the necess necessary expertise to successfully execute that work. Um, so you'll want to make sure that you are demonstrating that expertise by including resumes for key staff persons. And you could include that as an attachment on your application. If there is a position that's going to be necessary to get the scope of work done, but there isn't an existing staff member that has been slotted, perhaps because they need to be hired once you receive the grant award, it'll be critical that you also include as an attachment, a position description or better yet, a, a job posting description. Um, in that way, it's very clear the type of person that you're looking for, years of experience, skills, abilities, knowledge, um, as well as the expectation of that particular role as it relates to the power project. So thank you so much for joining us today. That concludes this power virtual workshop on organizational structure.